Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How's it going? I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a skill that's a challenging one, but a really important one. Okay, so one of the hardest emotional experiences we could have is to feel envy. And envy can just eat us up inside. And so this skill, Flexible Mind Dares, is all about helping us to move past envy. Okay, so if you're struggling with envy, you're not alone. Um, and this skill, it, it could be really help, helpful to you and hopefully make a difference. All right, so I'm gonna share that with you today. All right, so um, yet another acronym. Okay, so this is Flexible Mind Dares, let go of envy and resentment. Okay, so sometimes we have to dare to let go. It's hard to let go, right? And um, we wanna hold on to it because it makes us feel somehow in control, but in a way it, it emotionally is gonna tear us up inside, so it's not worth it. Um, so we wanted to let it like slowly seep through our fingers like sand pouring out, kind of like in that picture, okay? Um, so let's, let's do it. Um, okay, so what is envy, right? We're starting with envy. So envy, um, it's a normal human emotion, okay? You're not a freak if you feel envy. There isn't something wrong with you. Um, we all kind of feel it in, in one sense or another, okay? And it's an it's emotion that happens, it's a social emotion. And it's an emotion that happens when we compare ourselves unfavorably to another person, right? When we see them as having an advantage that we don't have and we think that maybe we deserve, right? So let's look at that picture, right? So the guy on the left is kind of feeling envious of the guy in the background in the spotlight who just won this award. Right, so maybe the guy on the left is feeling like, hey, you know, I'm not too different from him. How come he got it and I didn't get it? I I'm envious of him, I wish I had it, right? Maybe I feel like I deserve it, why did he get it, right? Oh, it's so painful, right? So envy triggers perceiving something to be unfair, right? When you feel like someone may have an unfair advantage over you, um, or you fail to achieve a coveted goal that others have achieved, right? So maybe the guy on the left really wants that award, that's one of his goals, and he didn't achieve it, and the other guy did. Ugh, right? So, and envied people, the people that we tend to envy, are often sometimes people who we feel are kind of similar to ourselves, right? And because we think we're similar, it feels extra unfair that maybe they got an advantage that we think we could have gotten, okay? So that's what makes it extra hard. All right, but believe it or not, envy isn't 100% negative, right? There's actually a way we could turn it around and make it helpful envy, right? So the helpful version of this could actually lead us to achieve our goals and to accomplish more things, right? It could kind of spur us on and give us some motivation, right? So helpful envy could involve genuine admiration or appreciation of another person's fortune, right? So this could be really challenging, right? Could Sometimes it's hard for us to actually feel really glad for somebody's achievement, right? When you think about it, you know, it's kind of like when, um, you know, you hear someone yell, bingo, and it wasn't you, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, good for you. I wish it was me, <laughs> right? Uh, it's hard to really feel glad in someone else's fortune. Um, but helpful envy actually allows us to do that. It's a very generous um, emotion, a very generous state of mind when we're able to feel glad for other success, right? Um, and like I said before, on the right side there, um, helpful envy can motivate us to try harder to achieve a de desired goal, right? It can give us some motivation and it helps us to maybe emulate or model somebody that we admire, right? So let's say um, I always wanted to run, right? And I never got good at running and I have some friends who run marathons or half marathons or 5Ks and I say, geez, like, I wish I could do that. How come they're doing it and I don't do it? I'm a little envious of them. Look how athletic they are. But in a way, maybe it's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe if I learned how to train, I could be like them. I could join them one day. Maybe I could take it slow and build up my endurance and my strength and, and I could do it, all right? So the helpful envy could help me push ahead on an athletic goal maybe that I never thought I could do, right? Um, so one of the cool parts of helpful envy as well, if you look at the bottom, it involves humility, right? And it involves admitting that I don't know everything and I can't do everything and I'm not the best at everything, right? So sometimes we kind of nurse these little fantasies like I'm the best, <laughs> but when we look at other people that are ahead of us in different areas of life, 
it humbles us a little bit. It makes us realize, you know what? Wow, other people are so much better at me at A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, <laughs> right? Um, so it kind of like puts us in our place. It reminds us that we're just human, that we're fallible, um, and we haven't succeeded in everything, but that's okay, right? And, and we can remember that it, everyone has people who are ahead of them in one way or another. So it just makes us part of the human family, part of the tribe, right? Okay. So now, mm, unhelpful envy. Okay, so this is probably what you've been waiting for. So sometimes, right, it's hard for us to feel glad about others' advantage, as you probably can guess, okay? Um, sometimes it's so painful for me to see someone ahead of me in a certain area that's important to me that I feel the impulse to want to sabotage things for them and ruin it for them, right? Because I, the only way to equalize things in my mind when I feel like I can't catch up to them is to bring them down to my level, right? To, to ruin things for them so they're just as disadvantaged as me, right? So that, that's the urge, okay? So you might have a desire to block and beat others from achieving their goals, right? So where I work, right? I work in an inpatient psychiatric hospital. Sometimes patients are afraid to let people know that they're close to discharge because they don't want their peers to ruin it for them, right? Like their peers might feel envious and feel like, hey, I wish I could be discharged. I think I deserve to be discharged. If, if I can't go, he can't go either. So I'm gonna help mess things up for this guy. I'm gonna provoke him into fighting and then they won't let him go and he'll be just as disadvantaged as me, <laughs> right? So this happens in a lot of different settings, okay? So we try to sometimes block people from achieving their goals and so then they won't be ahead of us, all right? Then we have um, a little competition with the snowman there in, in the middle, right? So Sometimes, you know, we want the person to fail, right? Ah, ha, ha. Ah, you, you messed up. Oh, I'm secretly glad about that, right? So what's that emotion called? Schadenfreude. That's um, a German term, okay, for feeling glad about someone else's misfortune, right? So envy is kind of related to that a little bit, right? So, oh, good, I'm glad you failed because now you're not ahead of me. Okay. And it even could segue into a desire for revenge. Right. So I want to kind of do something mean to you just to make you feel bad, just like I'm feeling bad. OK. And this could happen impulsively or you could be it could be something you plan. OK. All right. And another thing to know about envy, just a fun fact, is envy has a blend of two other emotions. So it has a blend of shame and anger. Right. So the shame is like. I know these urges I have to ruin things for people is not really a nice thing to do. And it's kind of against my values. It's kind of against my tribe's values. And I'm not really proud of it. And I kind of want to hide that from people. So shame has the urge to action urge to hide, right? While anger has the action urge to attack, right? So when I want to get revenge on people or ruin things for people, that's kind of more about the anger urge. Like I'm angry that you're ahead of me. I, I, I'm angry that you're doing better than I am. Excuse me. Okay, so it's kind of a blend of both of these emotions. So we're going to be addressing both of these emotions later in the lesson today. Okay, so like I was saying with um, the shame part, right? So there's a sense of needing to hide. Okay, so envy and secrecy go hand in hand. All right, so think about your experiences with envy. I'm sure you weren't like rushing up to tell people how proud you are of feeling envious about somebody. Right? Usually it's not something you're very open about sharing, right? Wow, I really envy, you know, so-and-so because she runs marathons and I can't. Well, you may not say it quite that way. You might mm, communicate in a different way. All right. Um, so why do we keep it secret? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you. So one, the envy person might have rightfully deserved the advantage and actually worked hard to achieve it, right? So if you then want to ruin it for somebody, it makes you look like a jerk, right? And other people know that the person earned it, and other people might be proud of that person, and other people might be cheering that person on. So if you're the one guy or one gal who wants to screw things up for that person, you know it kind of makes you look bad, right? So you kind of want to keep that a secret. And another time, other times we might realize our beliefs are irrational right? So we might be like twisting the things around in our head about that envied person and try to find their flaws or 
why they're morally inferior to us or why they don't deserve the advantage. And we might be concocting all kinds of crazy stories, right? And part of us wants to believe it, but part of us knows it's irrational and not true and that other people would probably pick that up. So we want to keep this a secret. And also, we kind of have some sense that other people may not really support us in what we're saying. Okay, they might, it might start to make us look bad. Although we want to have people join us in, in hating that person or ruining it for that person, we also kind of know it might make us look bad and it might ruin our relationships with trusted others. Okay, so there goes the secrecy. Okay, and another thing, if you probably think about it, is we, we don't really like being envied. We fear being envied, right? So like it's kind of lonely at the top, like they say, right? If someone, you know, is succeeding, there's always haters out there, right? So famous people, while they might have like millions of Twitter followers and millions of fans at their concerts, they also have a whole lot of people that don't like them either, right? Or, or envy them and want to ruin it for them, right? So we don't really want to deal with the backlash, right? So it's hard to be in the spotlight sometimes. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you um, the acronym for today, okay? So this is Flexible Mind Dares, right? So we're gonna try to dare to move past envy and resentment, okay? Um, while they don't define resentment in radically open DBT, I'll define it for you. So resentment literally means to re-feel something, okay? Re and sent, S-E-N-T, is the root for feeling, like sentimental, sentiment, right? So when I re-feel the envy over and over again because I'm obsessing about it, that's a really difficult experience, right? Sometimes we can't let it go, right? We hold on too tight and we suffer because we're holding on to the envy too tight, okay? So when we dare to let it go, we're letting go of the envy feeling and the resentment, the act of repeating the stories about the envy that keep us stuck. Got it? All right. So here we go. D for dares. First step. We have to determine if we're experiencing unhelpful envy, right? So first you gotta just recognize that envy's here, okay? That this is actually something I'm going through right now. All right, so how do I recognize it? Okay, I could ask myself some self-inquiry questions for a change, okay? So here's some things we could ask ourselves. So if I wanna determine if I'm experiencing um, envy-related thoughts and perceptions, um, these are some questions I can ask myself, okay? So first, do I feel that I have been wronged, neglected, or passed over by this person or others? Have I found myself thinking negative thoughts about this person or group, right? Because sometimes we could envy a whole group of people, right? Let's say there's a whole swim team that's doing great. I, I envy that whole team because I, I wish I was a good swimmer like all of them, right? Or I succeeding like that one group. Or my sports team is losing and your sports team is winning and I, I envy the whole team and all their fans, <laughs> right? So something like that. Okay, next. Um, do I find myself thinking that this person has an unfair advantage over me? Okay, so let's look at the picture we got here, right? So obviously the guy on the left, feeling a little envious. The guy on the right has a girlfriend. He has a nice convertible. Maybe he's feeling like, you know, I don't think he's much better than me. How come he's getting the girl and I'm not? Or how come he got this really cool car and I'm driving in this old jalopy? Hmm, doesn't feel very fair. Envy, envy, right? <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, and finally, okay, do I consider this person a rival or a competitor? Okay, so envy could, could come out of this sense of competition, right? That I have to be on top, that I have to be the best in order to be okay. So instead of just feeling like I'm already enough, which is kind of like a healthy self-esteem or soul esteem, I feel like I have to get better and better and achieve more and more to be okay, right? So that's kind of a slippery slope. And when I see people ahead of me in these kinds of competitive things, it makes me feel envious. All right. Okay, so still with the D. All right, so more things we could ask ourselves to determine if we're experiencing unhelpful envy. So let me look at the action urges I might have. Okay, so have I fantasized about getting back at them, right? The revenge. Um, do I want desire to punish them, beat them, or prove them wrong? Okay, so it's all about me getting on top not you being on top. Do I find myself sometimes secretly enjoying any misfortune that befalls this other person or fantasizing about misfortune occurring? You imagine them walking down the street and slipping on a banana peel and 
now they broke their leg and they can't run anymore. Ah, oh, too bad. <laughs> right? So, oh, now they can't do that thing I'm so envious about. Oh, right? Okay, so we've all done it. All right, so these are the action urges. Just because you didn't do them, it doesn't mean you're not fantasizing about them. But they're a signal you're experiencing envy, so they could be an important, you know, thing to notice. Okay, so more D, more determine if you're experiencing unhelpful envy, self-inquiry questions. So let me look at my actions, my actual behaviors. Do I find myself gossiping about this other person frequently? Do I seek confirmation from others that the person deserves to be punished or has an unfair advantage? Right, so let's look at these first together. Okay, so we have a woman and some other ladies there gossiping, right? So it's almost like I'm trying to confirm my beliefs that the other person isn't so great, right? So I'm talking about the envied person, I'm trying to like downplay their accomplishments, I'm trying to point out their flaws and get other people to agree with me. So now I feel assured that they're not so great and I'm still okay. Okay, ever play that game? Mm -hmm. All right, and then also, you know, have I tried to make their life difficult? So that could encompass all the revenge related things, right? Have I done things to try to sabotage this person because I'm envious of this person? All right, next, so this is the A. So we're doing dares, right? So this is the A of dares. Uh, let's make this a drop. Admit your envy and decide whether you want to change it, right? So first you're determining whether you had envy to, in the first place. Now you just got to really like admit it, all right? Okay, I guess I'm envious. <laughs> I, I looked at all these questions. I'm figuring out that, you know what? I got some envy and um, I'm aware of this emotion of envy, okay? All right, um, so now um, I had to determine whether I want to change it. So how do I determine that? Well, I got to first look at some of the pros and cons of keeping envy around, right? Is it helping me? Is it making me feel more motivated to do better? Or is it just keeping me negative? Is it eating me up inside? Is it making me more frustrated and angry? Is it keeping me up at night because I'm feeling inferior to this person, right? So if it's unhelpful envy, chances are it's probably better to work on changing it, all right? But you, you're the only one who can determine that for yourself. Okay, so another thing to consider is do I want a better relationship with the person I feel envy toward, okay? So if I do, I should probably start to get rid of the envy, okay? Because the envy is just gonna come between us, right? It's gonna be like this elephant in the room that's gonna make me feel bad and prevent me from getting connected with that person. All right, so here's another thing to consider as well, all right? Do you truly value the advantage enjoyed by the envied person, right? Is the thing that you're envying something that's really important to you, right? So if the answer is no, um, then maybe it's not as important as you thought it was, okay? So let's say I'm idealizing the fact that my friend is running a marathon, and I think that's so amazing, and I, you know, my life would be so much better if I just could run a marathon, if I was a runner too, and I, I feel so much happier, but, then I'm really rethinking it and saying, well, maybe that's not the only way to feel happy. And how do I know for sure that running all the time would make me feel happy? It's probably a lot of work. I mean, it's kind of cool to run a marathon and get a medal and recognition, but I don't know, like maybe the, the joy would wear off and I'm not sure if that would really do it for me. Hmm, right? So sometimes we gotta really look at it. Like we, it's like the grass is greener on the other side that, you know, just because they achieve something, it doesn't mean necessarily like it's gonna be this ideal fantasy situation that I have in mind, right? So we have to have a realistic perspective on this. And sometimes, you know, if the goal is to feel happy, there might be a variety of ways to feel happy besides that thing, okay? So just something to consider. All right, um, so actually, let's just look at that cartoon for a second. Um, so the woman on the left says, if I only had her looks, then the next one says, if I only had her lifestyle. And then the, the guy says, if I only had his success. And then the other guy says, if I only had his youth, right? So everybody's envying someone else for something, right? But he, everyone's unhappy in some way because they don't have what someone else has, right? But if you just appreciate what you had, maybe you would feel happier, right? We'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Okay, so anyway, back to the uh, diagram. Um, so do you truly value the advantage enjoyed by the envied person? Okay, if the answer is yes, okay, 
maybe running, let's say, really is important to me. I really think I would like to do it. It would make me healthier, more athletic. It would give me something positive to do. It would give me a group activity to join, maybe a running club. Okay, I do value it, and I think I want to take the first step in pursuing that. Okay, so let me use the envy in a helpful way to motivate me to meet a certain personal goal, a valued goal. Okay, so I'm going to try it, but I can't give up too fast, right? I'm, I can't run around the block once and say, you know what, forget it, I can't do it, right? Well, being a runner, being good at it, takes practice, takes time, persistence, got to stick with it, right? And that's the same for any valued skill, okay? So we have to be patient with ourselves. And, you know, if it's really important to us, it should be worth putting the effort in. Okay, so now we're on the R of dares, all right? So I got to recognize envious thoughts and action urges, okay? So if I deciding I'm going to change it, first I have to be more aware of what the thoughts and action urges are, right? So revenge, right? Am I experiencing a sense of revenge toward this person? Do I have an urge to get even? Make the person's life more difficult, expose their moral failings, gossip, all that stuff. And also, of course, because this is radically open DBT, how is that affecting the way I'm socially signaling, especially around that person, right? So if I feel like I want to get revenge, how is it making me come across? Even if I don't say it out loud, chances are there's something that's coming across in my body language, right? So maybe I'm sounding a little sarcastic or a little cold or you know, maybe like I'm trying to cover it up because I'm ashamed of it and I'm a little phony. Like, like the woman in the picture, she's like, have a nice day, mm. <laughs> right? So I'm trying to cover it up, but maybe not so successful. Um, I'm really getting eaten up inside, even though I'm trying to be polite, right? So that could be part of the social signaling. Okay, shame, right? So shame is one of the emotions underlying envy, like we said before. So do I have an urge to keep my feelings secret? deny my feelings or relabel them as righteous or correct, right? So that's probably part of the gossipy part. Well, yeah, see, so she doesn't deserve it anyway. Well, she, she's a runner, but you know, you know what I heard about her? Hmm. Okay, so that could affect my social signaling as well. So shame is kind of a shutdown response, an overwhelm response. So I might look kind of like the girl on the left where I'm kind of like numbed out and kind of down and kind of blah around others, right? I'm trying to maybe even avoid the person because just being around her makes me feel envy, right? And it's really uncomfortable. So that could be part of it as well because shame has a hide urge, right? Like it makes you feel like hiding, action urge. Okay, um, then the third one, am I trying to seek validation and confirmation from others? Kind of like that gossiping thing, right? So am I engaging in gossip, trying to get others to agree with me about my perceptions? And, you know, they don't really deserve the advantage. Maybe I deserve it, right? I'm trying to, like, build my story by engaging other people with that. Okay. All right. So, next, E. So, the E and dare. Dares. Okay. First, we got to go op opposite to the envied anger, right? So, we have anger and shame we're working with. So, first, we're going to go opposite to the envied anger, okay? So, first thing we can do. So, anger is part of our, our fight response, okay? It's part of feeling threatened right? We feel threatened by the person. So how do we turn off the threat system? Well, by turning on our social safety system, right? Because they both can't be on at the same time. So I could engage in self-care. I could do the big three plus one, all right? Our, one of our favorite social signaling skills. So whether I'm around the person or just thinking about the person or trying to direct it to my envy itself, I could do the big three plus one to help me feel more safe, more calm, right? Sitting back in my chair, deep breath, closed mouth smile, and eyebrow wags, okay? Next, instead of thinking about the envy characteristic or accomplishment or thing or person, which is kind of like looking towards something I don't have in order to seek happiness. Like happiness lies with achieving that thing and I don't have it, therefore I feel unhappy, right? So instead of looking somewhere else for my happiness, I'm gonna to try to look right here. So how do I do that? I gotta pump up my gratefulness, right? Maybe there's a lot of things I'm missing right here that's actually present that would make me feel happier and more fulfilled right now, okay? How do I count my blessings, right? What, what can I be grateful for, right? 
maybe I still have a family, maybe I still have my health or a job or certain other skills that are important, right? And I just overlook them all the time. But if I remind myself to be grateful for them, I feel less envy. Like I feel that uh, my cup is full. I'm okay with what I have and I don't have to be okay. I, I don't have to reach for something else to be okay. All right. Okay, so more go opposite to, to uh, envied anger. Another thing we could do is to validate the envied person, right? So instead of seeing the person as the enemy, the person who has a thing I, I, I want and I should destroy them, right? Kind of try to validate them. So what does validate mean? We had a whole lesson on validation not too long ago. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes, okay? Thus, the picture with the footprints, okay? So imagine life from the perspective of the envied person. You know, what have they done to deserve their advantage? How hard did they have to work? You know, what kind of support and resources did they need to get there? Do you think they're really happy with their accomplishment? That that, that that actually made their life happy? Or do they still have hard days too, just like me, right? What do you think life's actually like from that person's point of view? And how might they feel if someone were trying to sabotage them, kind of like maybe I am, mm, right? Imagine that as well. Also, um, try to be kind. That's a great way to go opposite to anger because anger wants us to attack, right? So instead, try to be kinder and gentler toward that person, all right? Not in a phony way, but like try to, after you validate, it's easier to be kind because you could really see things more clearly from their point of view and not just from this like envy story you're telling about this person, right? Okay, so just try to be kind and decent. All right, so now we're on the S of dares, okay? So in addition to going opposite to anger, we have to go opposite to shame, all right? So those are the two main components of envy, right? So now, instead of hiding my envy from myself and others, which is probably my tendency because I'm not very proud of all these desires to destroy the person, right? First, I got to admit it to myself right? Which I started to do earlier in the dares, but we're going to say it again now, right? So I got to admit it to myself, use the word envy, be really clear about it, and remind myself, it's, validate myself, remind myself it's a normal emotion, right? So don't further shame myself for the fact that I'm feeling envy, right? So instead of beating myself up saying, what's wrong with you? All right, I'm feeling envy. It's a normal emotion. I can get through it. I could use my flexible mind dares, okay? All right, so first I got to own it for myself. Next, try to share it with a person that you trust, okay? It could be a therapist, maybe a different friend, not the person you envy, um, maybe someone in your family, somebody that you feel like you could out yourself to, right? So outing yourself is an important aspect of um, being open, right? So tell the person what you've been going through. You know, I'm really struggling. I, I've really been envying this other person in my life because She's a really great runner and I wish I were. And I, sometimes I actually try to screw things up for her, you know? And um, I'm really ashamed of that, but that's what I've been doing. You know, I just had to tell somebody. You think you could understand, right? Oh, how honest is that, right? And sometimes when you do that, people actually feel closer to you. They feel like, wow, that was a really amazing reveal. Like, you know, it could kind of draw you in, you know, and that could be a plus actually, besides for maybe getting another perspective or feedback or support. Okay. All right. Next. Now here's the, the tricky one. If you want a better relationship with the person you envy, you could actually choose to maybe even admit your envy to that envied person, you know, and just say, you know, I have to admit something really challenging to you, but I've been aware of an emotion of envy that I have toward you. And sometimes I'm aware of, you know, the urge to want to sabotage things for you. And I'm aware of the thought that you don't deserve it. And I feel terrible about that, you know, I, and I really wish I felt differently, but I figured maybe if I just told you and, you know, we, we could work something out or maybe you could teach me how to run better so I could be like you, you know, I I'd like to admire you instead of be envious. You know, I, I'd want to learn how to do what you're doing. Um, so I can make myself a better person. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Can you imagine doing that? It might be like a really scary yet amazing experience, right? Um, and if you've actually done something to like try to sabotage the person or take revenge, you might even also admit that. Remember the last time when you felt a little sick after um, 
going to that, you know, that party, well, put something in your food because I didn't want you to run the next day because I was so envious. <laughs> well, maybe not that. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe if you own up to it, you know, then you can just clear the air and say, listen, I don't want to be that person. Um, but I had to, I had to out myself. I had to share it. Okay. So you can apologize for what you've done. You can express the desire to, you know, be more like them, maybe get help from them to get better. Um, and remember, you're both human beings. Like you might have different levels of ability or talents, but you're both humans, right? You both have pros and cons, ups and downs, good qualities, negative qualities, and there's nobody that's ideal, right? So we have to kind of keep things in perspective. But you know what? If you're able to do this, that's an incredible step in the right direction um, for both yourself and your personal growth and the relationship. So definitely reward yourself. Give yourself props for that. You know, pat yourself on the back because it takes a lot of courage for sure. Okay. Um, so that's um, pretty much the skill. Okay. So we'll do a quick overview here. All right. So flexible mind dares to let go of envy and resentment. First, determine if you're experiencing unhelpful envy, right? Recognize the fact that envy is even in the room with you, right? Admit your envy and decide whether you want to change it, right? So do a little pros and cons, figure is it worth working on it? Is it really bothering me? Is it worth turning it around? Recognize envious thoughts and action urges, right? So what am I thinking about? What do I want to do, right? First step to turning it around. Go opposite to your anger, envious anger, and then go opposite to your shameful envy, opposite to shame, okay? Communicate. Also, wasn't quite part of this acronym, but definitely could be an aspect of it, as we talked about in the last couple of parts. All right, so hope it helps. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, stay tuned for the next one, okay? Thanks, guys. See you soon.